Good evening, gentlemen. Password, please. We're part of the Somebodies Network. You are never alone when you have somebodies. Now do try and not make a mess on the credenza this week. Oh, speaking of another movie that just started filming recently. What's that? Zombieland 2. Yes. Now, even after the disaster that was the Amazon pilot... How did that happen? What, how it failed? Yeah. Like, we both saw it. It sucked out loud, but it was the same writers. I guess because if you don't have Woody Harrelson, nobody accepts it, and it just... Maybe it was, like, badly cast... I mean, what what was the, the the what really hurt this that pilot? Yeah, the the actors didn't have very good charisma. I I recognize that you're not going to be able to t- like who the hell was the who was supposed to take Woody Harrelson's role in that in that project? Uh, what, was it the guy who's playing Hellboy now? No, 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 no. It wasn't not, him. It is okay. not David All Harbor. No, 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 no. People people have seen that guy in prior projects, and they were like, well, that guy's going to break out very very soon. Like he was one of the standouts in the newsroom. Who wasn't Jeff Daniels or <laughs> Emily Mortimer or uh, who the fuck else was in that show? I don't know. Psylocke. Insert name. Yeah, I forget. I know Psylocke was somewhere in it, but I can't remember what her name is. I just call her uh, takes credit for stunties McGee. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, he was he was actually in the newsroom and he played like one of the bit characters, uh, another anchor. And people were like, he started getting like more exposure as the series went on and like even got a little bit of his own storyline in the last season. So it was like, all right, that guy's about ready to pop, but it's going to have to be that project that does it because he looks like a lot of other kind of like dad bodied white guys in uh, <laughs> <laughs> character actors in Hollywood right now. Um, but yeah, uh, no, it was just some, just some dude and he was just there. Yeah. They definitely didn't have any star power behind it. Yeah. And that, and that's fine. But as long as you're, as, as long as you've got your thumb on the casting pulse, then you can, you can make up for that. But this guy was just like a male Brie Larson. He was just kind of, he occupied space and read the lines as well as he fucking could <laughs> and didn't really do, he didn't really co- contribute any much more than that. And, and it's just like, all right, Woody Harrelson's, Woody Harrelson's where he is now because he's Woody Harrelson. He's Mazzo. He's not offensively Mazzo, but he's just crazy enough in order to commit just the right amount of psychosis to a role in order to impress itself upon other people, movie going audiences, et cetera, et cetera. I had to look it up. Uh, this guy, the guy who played Tallahassee in the pilot was Kirk Ward. What's he been in since then? Fuck it. Uh, what's he been in before that? What's he been in at all? Like nothing? I think that was his biggest role. And this is Amazon foot in the bill, mind you. Remember Alpha House? Yeah. John Goodman and at least three character actors that you actually know the names of. And another show from that pilot series, uh-huh. Those Who Can't. And Those Who Can't, which is... Uh, actually, no. Uh, Those Who Can't isn't on Amazon anymore, though, right? That's on True no, TV. No, it's on True TV. That's they right. picked it up. They picked it up. So that was at least a show worthy of being picked up by somebody else, which was nice. But nobody wanted Zombieland. Which is a hell of a statement, considering that the movie made the, as much bank as it did, contributed to the whole zombie pop cultural fabric, you know, with like double tapping and shit. It gave its own spin on the mythos. And then people kept clamoring for Zombieland 2, despite the fact that the show was just... It was a very strange move to make. It. Uh, I'm looking at the, the rest of the cast, the, the starring cast, and mm-hmm. who are these people? Tyler Ross... Isabella Vidochik. Uh, they're all they're sorry, but they're nobodies. Yeah, which is which is which sucks because they could have, I mean, they could have been like decent actors or decent players in their own right, but the the project just wasn't going to work in the way it was manifested. So when, when your lead role is sounds like an owl flew in, <laughs> you have problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows, man? Kirk Ward might be ready to pop, too, but he certainly wasn't on that thing. And that was Not like five years day. ago. No. Yeah. Which is too bad. But now we got Zombieland 2, and it's currently filming up in Atlanta right now because that's what Georgia does. They dominate yeah. Hollywood. Good for them. And uh, it's- Filmed in Georgia. Now, here is uh, what I'm worried about with this movie. And it's a very, it's a very pressing worry. Because it's something that, like, I had kept thinking about, even, like, in a, in a hypothetical sense since the first movie. And that is, 
when the fuck is Jay going to watch the first fucking movie? Because <laughs> for like five years, he put it off and it was like, I'll get around to it. And then I think he became oversold on it. And now he's in that like, I'm not going to do it mode because, you know, because so many people said it to him. So now it's like, God damn it. Am I going to have to clockwork orange your shit into this? <laughs> All right. Get the duct that, tape. That's what the- we need to do. We need to assign a movie, each of us, to mm-hmm. each other. Now that would that be cool. That we all need to watch. That would be cool. Yes. Like, okay, if you were to spring a movie... Oh, what a perfect segue. All right, if you were to spring a movie upon me, like, today, that you wanted me to see really badly, not because you think I'd like it, but just because I ought to, and I find it enriching in some way, you know? Like, what would you throw at me? You see, you'd be difficult because you've seen almost everything. I've seen so many fucking movies. <laughs> yes. That'd be very... It would be hard for me to find one that... I think you should see and be that you haven't seen at all. But you see, if you had been listening to your own podcast since 2015 or so, this would be a pretty easy endeavor to complete because I've never seen The Godfather. I don't remember that little factoid. I have never seen The Godfather 1, 2, or 3. Okay. And to that end, I've never seen The Exorcist 2, and I've never seen The Exorcist 3. Yeah, you're not missing much. I really want to see The Exorcist 3, though. So that's going to happen at some point. Well, that's that's your own hopes and desires. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So you don't think I'll get anything out of that movie at all? I mean, that's up to you. It's like watching The Omen 2. It's like, th- what's up with this kid? I've never seen The Omen. What? See, the thing is, is that, like, when you go back into the era of classic film and you start picking out, like, the big titles... I'm so invested in, like, trying to find the obscure, weird, and countercultural shit that I I might as well have, like, glossed over. I didn't see Bullet until I was 34. Have you seen The French Connection? I've seen The French Connection, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would have to have seen The Fucking French Connection. But you see, I saw that movie before I saw Bullet in order to (sighs) to frame how, like, my priorities are set. So, um, and I saw it mainly because of the car chase, too, just so you know. Um, but like, it, it, like outside of that also, uh, like, um, I just saw Mad Max like two years ago for the first time ever. The original? The original, the original, original Mad Max, which is like some crazy ass filmmaking. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause it was all practical effects. It was all practical effects and it was gorilla as shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had, it was just a camera and their actors and that was all, which is why they shot it, which is why they set the movie at like the cusp of the, uh, of the apocalypse. Because you, you'll remember in the original movie, there was still a working police force. Uh, they were still like stable itinerances. People lived in houses. Um, they hadn't quite run out of fuel or water yet. They were just about to breach the uh, post-scarcity level of, uh, of civiliz- uh, civilized panic. You know, but everything was still, as we recognized it, just a little run down. But that's why they had to shoot in and around all of these other locales and cities and stuff in order to make their in order to weave their uh, reality together. And then afterwards was Thunderdome, which is the one I did see and I fucking you know didn't like. Um, but I never seen Road Warrior either, so that's another one you could do. I have, however, seen the shit out of Ice Pirates, <laughs> <laughs> which is a movie that was a complete ripoff of Mad Max and Star Wars and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, I think it was made during that time when any studio was greenlighting anything that was sci-fi fantasy based. Yeah, yeah. That's why Crawl got out. I like Crawl. <laughs> I, I like Crawl too. Was, I have it on DVD. Yeah, it was it was pretty creative for what it was. Um, but uh, what are you thinking? Like thinking about like stuff like The Godfather and all that. I could probably try to track that down pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. You see, I'm trying to remember if you should watch. Godfather 1 and 2, mm-hmm. or The Godfather Saga. The difference between the the two sets are The Godfather Saga is told in chronological order. Oh, dear. Because in Godfather 2, there's a lot of flashbacks. Uh-huh. Like stuff that happened to Vito Corleone as he first moved to America and was integrating into society and everything. So what, they take like the flashbacks and that comprises the preamble to 1 in the saga cut? Yeah, they they chop it all up, and so Mm -hmm. it all happens chronologically. Wow. (laughs) And what's the runtime on that bitch? (laughs) Oh, because it it, the the saga has like I think all three movies. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a day. (laughs) It's a day and a half. (laughs) So like I watch two hours of it, go for a walk, watch another two hours, rub one off, have a shower, and then I watch the last. You know, probably at that point, uh, part three will be starting up, and you can just shut it off at that point. (laughs) Really? Okay. Is three no good? Is that like the black three sheep? Three is no good. I it, especially compared to the the epic level of quality that the first two movies are. Uh huh. 
yeah, skip three. It's all right. Ugh. I'll tell you what I'll do then for my uh, for my cinematic homework assignment. I'll watch the first movie as it is. Okay. Because that was that's a movie that is pure that is pure in its intent. Because there was no Godfather two or three written when the first movie was being shot, and therefore that movie exists as it is without any further interference. Well, you know it's based off a book, right? It is based off a book. Yes. From what I understand, they took some liberties with the movie that um, Mario Puzo eventually greenlit, um, like a more authentic like TV movie to be shot that oh, was more in line to the book itself. There's always going to be cuts, but there's yeah. always going to be the first cut, too. Yeah. Which is why, outside of any studio interference, like this isn't a case of like the Brazil original cut and then the Brazil <laughs> studio cut, in, in which case the studio just completely guts the meaning out of the entire film. This is like Francis Ford Coppola in the studio knowing what they're getting into when they're working with this guy. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. <sighs> to, to a point, um, All right. it's still a hell of a movie on its own. Um, okay. The, fir the first movie does establish like, hey, here are the characters. Here's mm -hmm. their backstory. Here's, But they do it in such a subtle way mm -hmm. that you don't feel like you're being spoon fed information. It's like, Oh, this guy is that guy's cousin. And this guy is, Oh, he's like the enforcer for the group and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. All right. Um, it's some of the best storytelling you'll find. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, then Godfather one. So here is because I just got this uh, showing up on my doorstep this week, among a couple of other things. Um, I know I've been talking about this uh, becoming one of your like uh, anime milestones over the last year or so, and I finally got a copy of Perfect Blue, oh, Satoshi okay. Kon's Psycho and Wire masterpiece about fragmented identities and uh, loss and a bunch of other, you know, breathless, Mind trip. breathy, meaningful film phrases. Um, yes, and because this is the 20th anniversary edition. It's been remastered, so it's all pretty and nice-like for everybody. But I think there's actually a second disc in here. Hold on a second. And it would be a good thing to get into right now because uh, Satoshi Kon is dead, and uh, he's not going to be making any more movies. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, right. But knowing Satoshi Kon, <laughs> don't count him out. <laughs> what do you think we should sick on Jay, though? Well, aside from... Zombieland. Zombieland. See, the thing with Jay is that you can't force it. At the same time. It's too bad he's not here to defend himself. But, you know, I've given him a good ten fucking years to get this done. And um, I Jay, think... Jay, you have to watch Zombieland. <laughs> Jay, you've got to watch Zombieland now. I know he's not listening to yeah, this Yeah, whatever. Um, but even if, it's probably not on streaming or anything. I'm not going to send my Blu-ray. But... You know what? Let's take a quick look. All right. Check a I mean, primer. if anything... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm checking uh, justwatch.com. For the longest time, it was on Netflix. Like, I want to say since 2014 to 2017. There we go. 2009, Zombieland. Uh, let's see. It's not streaming anywhere, but you can rent and buy it everywhere. All right. Well, that's already a roadblock. More than meets the eye. No, that's Transformers. <laughs> not Joe. A real American hero. Um, all right. So aside from Zombieland, what do you think we ought to, uh, we ought to whip his way? I don't know. Um, has he seen uh, Shaun of the Dead? He has seen Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Seen Shaun of the Dead. I know cool. he's seen Shaun of the Dead because he hasn't seen Hot Fuzz. And out of those two movies, ah. you'd think that he would have seen Hot Fuzz first. What about World's End? I've never seen World's End. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's got to be something I should probably pack down to <laughs> <laughs> at some point. Um, As, just stick to, to Zombieland stick for right to now. Stick to Zombieland for right now? All right. Yeah. We'll put him up to that and see what he says. And then he'll be like, you guys can both gobble each of my nuts. And we'll be like, all right, as long as you see Zombie Land. Fair deal. God. <laughs> hey, listen, that's how much I love spreading the good word of film culture. Um, how the hell did we get onto this, though? Uh, I, I, I don't know, but you let's spread some more film culture. Mm -hmm. What? J.K. Rowling has lost her goddamn mind. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but yeah. She's uh, she's a victim of her own uh, aggressive wokeness, as it turns out. Uh, you know what? There, it's fine if you want to retcon your own characters. <laughs> I but know. You know it's what? So you're, funny. you're a children's book author. Author. <laughs> she puts out a tweet after no one had asked. Uh huh. I mean, it was it was pretty clear 
that the evidence was made previously. Uh-huh, yeah. That the characters Dumbledore and Grindelwald uh, had a relationship uh-huh. with each other yeah. in some way. To my uh, opinion, I haven't seen the most recent movie. Uh, I need to fix that, like, really soon, although I've heard it's not as good mm-hmm. as some of the other Wizarding World movies. Well, this is her first screenplay, isn't it? Uh, I can't answer. I don't think so. I think she did the first movie. The first um, ama- uh, Fantastic Beats movie. Oh, okay. All right, all right. And I'm talking about the second one. The storyline is that, yeah, uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald had a relationship. My interpretation of that was, to this point, Dumbledore was attracted to Grindelwald. Mm-hmm. Grindelwald knew this and exploited that attraction. That's how I saw it. Okay. Oh, so like already in Fantastic Beasts, the heretofore unacknowledged uh, homosexual tract with Dumbledore was there and it was acknowledged in the movie. What, but no. now she's trying to make Dumbledore it two-way. Dumbledore was not in the first Fantastic Beast. The character Dumbledore okay. was All not right, in But it. he's being written as such in the second movie. I believe so. I haven't seen it yet, like I said. So they danced around it because obviously it was a wizarding world. It's still a children's book property, no matter how you cut it. So any mention of like sexual dynamics is going to be kind of taboo. But right. the thing is, is that like they still want to present those sorts of relationships as, uh, as, as taken for granted, as something that's not really, you know, hemmed and hawed over. Right. Like it's normal. I mean, we're all adults. We can we we can uh, accept just about anything. Right. It's just that yes, this is a children's series. Although I think, fa- well, no, Fantastic Beasts is it's a movie of its own. But mm-hmm. she put out a tweet, basically indicating that Dumbledore and Grindelwald had an intense sexual relationship. Okay, no one asked for this kind of information. That's. That's because that's what J.K. Rowling does now when she's not working on screenplays. Here's the other thing that's weird about this sort of this sort of approach to establishing a social media presence for a creator. Anyway, you forget that you are followed by kids. Twitter doesn't have an age gate on it yet. I'm not quite sure it's ever going to because they try to, and kids, surprise, fucking got around it. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blowing, I know. But who? Yeah, you, what you're, the point you're the point you're making is that it was a, not a character building element in either one of those two profiles, right? Right. So why the fuck did you mention it anyway? Here's the thing: when it's you're, like if she came out and she said Dobby likes to take fisting, <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, get your fists right up in there. <laughs> what did you need that sock for, Dobby? <laughs> Her name is Josephine. <laughs> I met her in prison. Um, it's yeah, it, w- it wasn't necessarily solicited at all. And the thing is, is that like when you're on Twitter and you're that and you have that much exposure and you follow a certain political delineation without making this like a right or left issue, then you feel the need to incessantly just spout out these and there's a term for it. It's, it's virtue signaling. You've heard this before probably, right? But a bunch of mm. assholes have beaten that term into the ground, so it doesn't really mean anything anymore. You're basically like saying shit, like parroting talking points and putting your own spin on them to your followers in order to get the traffic. That's your likes. That's your retweets. You need your numbers. That's your drag score for Twitter, you know? And a lot of times because a lot of a lot of left and right politics have to do with like gender and sexual dynamics – People feel the need to just like randomly comment on it, sight unseen. And that's fine if you're a political commentator or you're like a, somebody who writes about the counterculture for, for any of those, for anywhere on the political spectrum. You're in good company. But the thing is, is that sometimes, well, you're a fucking children's book author and you're misjudging your audience, whether on social media or elsewhere, so much so that you're coming off as nothing less than patronizing at best and completely like hideously tone deaf at worst. So now you've got yeah, like a stay bunch in of in your median, stay yeah, in your lane. Exactly. You've got middle schoolers looking at this tweet now and you're like, Oh, sodomy. I didn't know that's what was going on in the wizarding world. What's happening. <laughs> Does all of Anders have like an adult section in the back? <laughs> and it, you know, it's not even that like a few months earlier, she put out something. Somebody had asked her, um, let me try and rephrase as best I can. Yeah. Uh, before muggle plumbing was instituted into Hogwarts, uh-huh. 
how did the students and faculty use the bathroom? Uh, and she responded with, they just went where they were standing and used magic to woof it away. I think that was actually a Pottermore tweet because I saw somebody retweeting that. And I believe that the first and the second parts that you had just described were all condensed into one tweet. But, by the way, Pottermore got dragged for that because it was a stupid fucking tweet. <laughs> But hey, she runs Pottermore. Oh, she runs Pottermore. Yeah. Fuck me. Jesus. What? <laughs> what are you? All right. Well, whatever. Okay. I. You know what? I swear to God, if I was actually into Potter, my emotions would be on like a run, a, just a runaway roller coaster right now. Because there's so many things like, yeah, great, we've got Fantastic Beasts and everything continues, and the Universal Parks are doing so well. But apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently wizards now have to state their status and I got to watch I got to wear the shitty footwear out in the halls. <laughs> Just in case somebody didn't like make good and tidy up after themselves. I mean this all started I think before the last book came out. <laughs> Remember, yeah, I think it was before the last book came out. She had in a uh, Q&A had stated that Dumbledore was gay and everyone's like, "Oh, really? Well, that's an interesting uh character aspect. Mm-hmm. We didn't know that. We didn't we yeah. there's no indication." He, like, Great. There, there were no implied paramours or anything throughout the entire series. So people were like, "All right, that makes sense." And yeah, and I think because that was so uh warmly taken in by the fans that mm-hmm. she's like, "Hmm, I wonder how much I can push this." <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and there's just been like once a year there's these weird interviews or tweets or something that she puts out Mm -hmm. it's just where are you going with this woman it's just when some when somebody tweets something outrageously dumb they are just looking for the score and that's all i guarantee you that like now here's the thing about twitter they were there's talks of them getting rid of uh, all of the uh, easily visible vanity metrics for that website and a lot of people are kind of losing their shit over because they're like no i want my retweets etc etc but then there are a lot of people that are like, you know what? I bet you if you did this for just like a week, you would see a sharp decrease in stupid tweets throughout the week. <laughs> Guaranteed. I don't turn off retweets, but I tried to put uh, liked tweets into my muted phrases, and that worked for a while. But I guess Twitter got kind of wise to it and decided to recode those phrases. So now it doesn't work anymore. So whenever like, uh, whenever somebody that I follow likes something else and they do it like 20 times in under an hour – then I'm going to see this person liked this. And I'm like, man, I don't fucking care. I don't follow these people that this person follows for very specific reasons. And this isn't helping, this isn't helping to convince me to increase my traffic from a user side, you know, standpoint. So if somebody's liking some shit from whoever the fuck, uh, boogie two nine eight eight or something. (laughs) And, uh, Great YouTuber. The guy whines a lot on Twitter, though. For God's sakes, man. You 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 literally make a living jawing off into a webcam. I'm trying to sympathize with your position here, but man, shit ain't as bad as you're making it out to be. Okay? Anyway, <laughs> at least one happy tweet per day would offset the misery. But there's somebody that I follow that, uh, that like likes a lot of his tweets, and it's like, I fucking don't care. <laughs> I just, get it out of my timeline. I'm not going to follow him. This status will never change. So that's that's my big pet peeve with Twitter at the moment. Now, because I only follow like six or seven people, the negativity has uh, markedly decreased. Funny how that works out. <laughs> go figure. Yeah, go figure. But it's like Twitter's trying to sick that ne- negativity onto me because of the other people that I follow follow like 500 people. So they're like, whatever they like, I have to see. I don't fucking want to see it because I don't want any negative shit on my timeline. You got it? Jack, pay attention, please. So... <laughs> <laughs> you're like this marketing and programming genius you can't read people for fuck's sake <laughs> they're your core audience and your product at the same time get it together man sorry did i just rant about twitter again no all right of course not <laughs> I, I i guess we have to give our shout out to peter capaldi because that's the only thing yeah, that's lasting that's right. long I, your I was twitter about rants. To do that. like hey peter how's it going you enjoying your vacation cool love it <laughs> <sighs> I still think your screwdriver was the best. Yeah, I'm sorry. Next to uh, next to um, uh, eights, eights was pretty cool too. No, no, it wasn't. Eights was just four. Um, whatever. This nice. went off the rails. Um, so, like, outside of bitching about Twitter and shit, uh, you're talking about J.K. Rowling, fucking, uh, <laughs> fucking uh, skirting her gravy her gravy train around the cliffs <laughs> of Dover. Um, <laughs> and you know, it's 
It's her character. She can do whatever the hell she wants with him. It's just... Yeah, yeah. I have the same right to just stop buying your book. Yeah. I wouldn't stop... I mean, to a point, I guess. Like, if the movies no, are if the I movies could. are ridiculous because of these arbitrary changes, then go don't go see the movie. But don't go see the movie for some, like, ham-fisted ideological reason. Like, oh my god, girls are Ghostbusters now. I can't see this. Oh, no, that's, that's yeah. just asinine. See it just because the movie sucked balls and it was a completely vacuous attempt to cash in on a veneered property. Spe- speaking of properties. Go ahead. What? <laughs> what are you We're doing? We're terrible at segueing here. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> Otherwise, this just, uh, this like rage bullet was just going to keep fucking going until it hit the bone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier today at 12.01 a.m., uh, the. Dep- of the day of we record this. Why are you the starting deal, this like an episode of Cold Check? I don't Earlier really know. today on the south side of Chicago at 12.01 p.m., there was a series of grisly murders, and yet all were made with claw marks with the saliva of a dog present at the scene. Anyway, sorry. Well, the victim in this case are probably the fans because there's a lack of creative control now because Disney now owns about 60% of all media marketing. Yeah. The deal with Fox went through today. So now Disney owns a lot. Uh, a lot. A yeah. lot of Fox. Disney stuff. owns much. <laughs> Mixed feelings. Um, That's how you can summarize this, at least for me. Um, not for me. Not, not really for you? Not really. Uh, right. I mean, they're getting some properties that they really wanted, like the Alien franchise, Avatar, the X Men. Yeah, yeah. And then they're they're the Simpsons now belong to Disney, that's, which means that's at least uh, two fifths of Islands of Adventure that they now own. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Simpsons is on Universal side, but still, still, yeah, yeah, big deal. Wow. <laughs> it's oh, it's mixed. I say mixed feelings because of this. All the cool things that, like, a nerd or a fan would get into that you just mentioned, right? Man, um, multimedia conglomerations are bad news uh, to begin with. With too much stroke, I mean, to begin with. And now these guys have got so much muscle in their pockets. Some of these situations, I think, they bought for the sole purpose of either selling again Mm -hmm. or... Well, in, in some cases, yes, they are... It was part of their deals, like, hey, we'll take this off your hands, but we'll... We'll sell it uh, in some time down the line. Or in some cases where they bought it to, in my, I think, like with Blue Sky Animation Studios, mm-hmm. I think they're going to close them down. Oh, oh God. They Probably take in like their, their best people and then just shut them down. Because they already have Pixar and Disney Animation. They don't need a third I, studio. God, I didn't realize Blue Sky was owned by Fox. Jesus. Yeah. Phew. All right. That's not great news. The the thing is that like uh you you kind of trust the uh you kind of trust the um oh my god I'm gonna sound like such a fucking bush leaguer right now the financial arm of the government or at least the branch of the government that oversees the fair trade antitrust anti antitrust is a motion that this branch of the government that whose name escapes me right now would be responsible for but is it the Federal Trade Commission or somebody else because you kind of have to like believe that they are on the side of small business or at least stable economics to make the right decision in granting and ensuring that a deal goes and ensuring that the a deal a deal of this scale is is still workable or attainable within our own in, within our within our own fiscal infrastructure you, you know what i mean sorry mm-hmm. my my fucking words are failing me right now but um but the, but the thing is, is that I don't have any left. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is that like they were completely OK with it, even though there were a couple of hang ups uh, in the early stages of negotiating this deal. But in the end, Disney got Fox or at least most of Fox. And now they own so much of what you see on television. Uh, they have at least two full streaming services now. And I'm going to say that, like, yeah. A couple of other investors still have a piece of Hulu. That's just a piece now. Yeah, they own majority control. They don't own all of Hulu. Yeah, yeah. I think A no, uh CBS. No? CBS was part of it. Um ABC well, was okay. also, but Disney owns ABC. So yeah. right. Um But it was like a three way between Fox, ABC, and C- I can't remember if it was NBC or CBS, but Oh yeah, Wall Street three way. But now they own 60% of Hulu. They're starting up Disney Plus uh, later this year, next year, or something like that. Right. Which, uh, which Let's see. They, they also grabbed 
all the FX networks. Yep. FX, FXM, Archer. FXX. They fucking own Archer. Can you believe that shit? Now, I don't know if FX owned Archer. Whoever owned Archer, that's... Because they own the channel now. It, you, if, that's the weird thing. In some cases, they own the the programming, and mm-hmm. in some cases, they own the channel itself. Okay. Archer was produced by uh, by William Street Productions, or now it's uh, something else. Um, I forget what it's called. So, okay, and they have their background in uh, Turner. They have I their think. background in Turner. However, this is separate from Turner because well, that's why they went to FX. Uh, Cartoon Network didn't want to show Archer. So Williams, no, uh, Williams is what I already said. It's something county. Bleh. But um, the thing is, is that it is still branded as an FX original, which I take to mean that FX owns all pending trademarks to Archer, that, at least until their contract runs out. That could be, but I think it's because Archer debuted on FX, and they have that right to say that. But yeah, I think you, what you're saying is accurate. Mm-hmm. I hope. But on so. top of that, they also have. Um, and at the same time, I don't. <laughs> well, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those w- weird things you have to look a little deeper in. Like, um, oh yeah, I saw uh, Jay and I were talking about this, and he pointed out, um, did Fox Sports go to Disney? He's like, no, because they also have ESPN. They're not allowed to own two sports a major. Two major sports networks, yeah. So Fox Sports, Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, mm-hmm. that stays with Fox. Mm-hmm. But all the regional Fox networks go to Disney, and those are the ones that Disney has to sell within a certain time frame. Wow. Holy so, like, shit. Fox Sports Florida, Fox Sports Wisconsin, Fox Sports Ohio, mm-hmm. Arizona, all the regional networks. All the O&Os are, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, the Yes Network. They also own all of National Geographic channels now. Holy shit. And I don't think they have to sell those. I think they're going to hold on to that one. Oh, this is nuts. Because they're like the major rival to Discovery Channel, which is only a shell of what it used to be. Oh, they also have the A&E Network, History Network, <laughs> which was the, Lifetime. Wow, which were the other two uh, 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 rivals to uh, Discovery Network. Yeah. History and A&E. Vice? I don't know who Vice is. Vice is, I believe, the cable network started by the blog Vice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, They also pick up all of Sky TV aside from Sky Sports. The thing I'm wondering about Sky Sports... Well, no, if they own Sky TV, then that means they own at least one British network, doesn't it? Well, the it, it gets broken down into Sky UK, Sky Ireland, Deutschland, Italia... Europe, at least, then. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, basically... What we're what we're taking away from this story is that um, we're all going to be sucking that cartoon mouse's dick before too long, and um, and uh, we have no uh, industrial freedom left. At least, if I was an extremist, I'd be saying that. And honestly, it that's why that's why I said mixed feelings because yay, Captain America gets to play with the Fantastic Four now. But other than that, we're whittling ourselves down to like a core set of. Three mega conglomerates that we all have to live and kind of abide by at some point. Comcast, so, Disney, and who's the other? Comcast, Disney, I would say AT&T, but at and is kind of like second. No, Google. Google was it. Um, and Google's, uh, they're still in like the communications business, but kind of in the, inf- in the information, uh, the brokerage side of it, you know? Creating content, curating content, kind of giving the other two, the other big two, uh, some shit to feed off of. There's also Microsoft and other stuff like that too. But before too long, you're going to be yeah. able, you're going to be able to count these co- these corporations on one hand. It's going to be kind of like cyberpunk scary, you know. And I know a lot of people are like jacking themselves off, like, "Oh my god, the cyberpunk future is here!" And it's like, no, that's the point of those books. You don't want that to fucking happen ever. That's <laughs> uh, that's it. It's it's going to be <laughs> the idea behind those stories is as a cautionary tale against creating a technological feudalist society, you know. You don't want to live in a fucking fiefdom, no matter how fast packages can get to you at your doorstep from when you order them. It's it's shit. You're the, the idea at like its worst. At, when if you push this wall all the way off the joists, is going to be the whole barcode on the back of our next sort of reality that you know people used to people used to talk about with like you know a wink and a nod. It's never going to happen. But we're kind of looking at that first shot being chambered right now. It's 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 a scary enough thing to like look at a gun, but it's a scarier thing to look at it with a safety off. You know, it's funny. There was a um, epic rap battles mm-hmm, mm-hmm. did uh, a rap of Stan Lee versus Jim Henson. I saw that. 
<laughs> yeah, and at the, at the very end, Walt Disney steps in and says, hey, guess what? I own this series, which is a double joke, because first he's talking about command owning, but then... Yeah, uh, dominating the, the, the series. Dominating, yeah, right. dominating. Mm-hmm. But then the, the the side joke to that is uh, Epic Rap Battles at the time was made by Maker Studios, which was owned by Disney. Yeah. So is Epic Rap Battles not under the Maker, Maker label anymore? I don't think so, because they've been on hiatus for, like, the last two years. They're mm-hmm. coming back, I guess, under their own power, uh, like, in a month or two. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen, I've seen them teasing their shit here and there. But I think that's the deal, that they're, they're out from under Disney and Maker. Which, hey, that's, you can still get out and do stuff. Yep. I know, I know. And it's not like it's, you know, they're, uh, it's not like Disney's Dare Smile Future or something like that, where, <laughs> you know, you have to make dreams as long as you don't mind the shackles or anything, which is great for independent creators and stuff. But look at my empire of joy. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Like empires are a scary proposition. No, this is an empire that they've built. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's uh, that was the big business news. Hey, we have a business segment. How about that? Yeah, go figure. Uh, Just as long as it's you know somewhat uh, correlating to the usual bullshit that we talk about. Ah. But anyway, speaking of bullshit, I have a stream in about twenty minutes. Did we want to touch on a? We did we want to touch upon anything else uh, before? No, I, I think th- we've uh, hit all the notes I left. All right, I did have one thing I wanted to mention because Jay and I were just talking about it today and thought it was a pretty cool idea. Um, We've been uh, well. We've been having like ideas for like random shit over the last month, but I like this one because it's a uh, it's a it's a project with a definite terminus, so it won't be like the lost podcast that I still really want to do. By the way, um, did you hear this idea yet? Did he tell you? Mm, it's not ringing any bells. He wants us both to get like fucking super double ass tanked and watch episodes of Lost and then commentate <laughs> on them as they're playing. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I'm very much down for that. Um, this is what I brought to him today because I got, uh, this, uh, in the mail earlier. This is a book by an author named Nick Bantock. And if you don't know that name, I was good, I was about to say, well, I'll tell you why you should, but not really. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's of relevant interest, uh, to me. Um, because, uh, he is an author or rather an artist who tends to write books that feature, um, uh, that feature false documents that provide some element of uh, interactivity between him and the characters, and the reader. All these are envelopes that contain letters and postcards and stuff. Okay? Oh. He is also the creator of the uh, world-renowned Griffin and Zabine series, which would be more familiar than this book here, which is about an artist who creates postcards, go figure, um, who begins a correspondence with somebody he's never met, who lives like three oceans away, etc., etc. And the first book is kind of like half of a horror story. But then, like, they kind of soften all of that into the other books so children could read them without, you know, having nightmares. Anyway, but what this has to do with is a series or genre of books that up until now I was calling docufic, document fiction. Oh. Which is fictional narratives that are Wouldn't that be a mockumentary? See, kind of. I guess, Mockum- I guess that, that has more of a humor spin to it. Mock- mockumentary is mocking. I mean, there are parodic docufix there's parodic docufix of other docufix um but mockumentary i think is uh pretty closely tied to cinematic arts which you know are its own its own thing because you think of a documentary is a moving picture a mockumentary is a mock array of that um so uh but they've there are other books that are tied in with this and we were like okay well how much has this format like touched other forms of media and we're thinking about like shit ARGs, alternate reality games, are kind of the same way. Uh, there, uh, there was the letter that came with. Uh, I, I, I remember this. Uh, suddenly, there was a letter that came with uh, Star Tropics for the NES, and you couldn't complete the game without dipping the letter into water and seeing a little code at the bottom. And I started reading about the history of these epistolary novels, false documents, forgeries, and stuff. And they go back as far as like the 16th century. This idea. So we're kind of like, all right, well, we're going to take this. We're going to make like maybe a 10 minute actual documentary or something like that about this style of book writing. And it's going to be a lot of research, which is something that I'm not used to doing (laughs) because normally uh, my interactions with uh, Internet content is uh, you ask me to come on this podcast and then I just like talk shit for for 90 minutes. And it's worked out pretty well so far. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is like a, this is an actual like project project, which I'm trying to do. And uh, 
Well, we, uh, we're we looking forward to finishing it at some point soon. So, <laughs> that's what I've got going on. How about you, buddy? Nope, that's uh, a <sighs> finding day with me. I haven't prepared a uh, what you doing. Oh, it's not really even a what you doing. Like, if I was doing a what you doing, I'd be like, well, I've got like 25 video games on the docket right now. Oh, God. <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, no, wait, I already mentioned. Wait, I'm sorry. Did the, Nothing. 24. I finished Dragon Quest Builders finally. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Wait, it, that game does come to an end? It does come to an end. Uh, there are four chapters. It's just that they take fucking forever to get through. <laughs> um, and, uh, the rest of the game is pretty much like just a Dragon Quest and Minecraft, but the thing is, is that, like, you have to finish all the chapters in order to unlock most of the content that you use in the open world part of the game. But the open world part of the game doesn't have any quests or missions or anything. You're just literally building Club Harem out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I unfortunately destroyed it, so don't worry about that. Um... <laughs> Just uh, like the after, real I, one. after I got done building one tit, I was like, ah, uh, I'm kind of done. <laughs> so the building ended up looking like Nancy Reagan before I demolished it. And uh, <laughs> it was all red. Send all your Twitter call outs right here. That's right. Oh, God. Uh, anyway, so that's a fine game. But, you know, with Dragon Quest Builders 2 coming out, I'm like, I got to put a cap on this because I'm not going to be coming back to this ever again. Um, and when 2 comes out, you bet your ass I'm going to be all over that, like, white on rice when that <laughs> comes out. So that's going to do it for episode 55 of the Nerd or Not podcast. You can go to tpublic.com, mm-hmm, search mm-hmm. Cretans Guild, one word, forget it yourself a shirt hoodie phone case office supplies it seems like we say this every episode doesn't it i it sure (laughs) does feel like it but you know what what you should do is you should go to twitch and check out midnight mirth and watch Corey snap some legos together let's all go to the lobby sorry that's what the whole thing reminded me of (laughs) yeah you should you should come by and watch me put legos together live it's not very exciting but that's honestly kind of the point that's how I started doing this shit. Yeah. Uh, unless you're melting them, I don't see anything. Unless you've taken like an entire set of Legos and like spread them on a, uh, oh, spread God. them on a path in front of you, much like the where, coal walkers of the Polynesian where are you going theater. with this? Yeah. And walking across them without oh, socks. Like hot coal. <clears throat> yeah. In order to prove yourself as a man, which is something that I would never do. They do that in Polynesia. Yeah, that's 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 right. That's right. The five year olds, though, it's just the kids that do that. The joke here being the joke here being that I couldn't endure something that kids easily can't. I can't. (laughs) Good. I'm glad we're in like company then. (laughs) Yeah. We feed off dialogue. We ask you to subscribe, like, and engage us in the comments of anything we have talked about today. You can find us at Cretans Guild on Twitter. Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and again, he is on Twitch mm-hmm. at Midnight Mirth. Yep. So to all our followers, new and old, we say Welcome to the What? Welcome to the Guild! Welcome to the Guild! Tasmanian Devil just decided to join us well, last that minute. That <laughs> is, that is, that is, why you bury Taz in the cold, cold ground? <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is part of the some buddies network you're never alone when you've got some buddies My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. We've searched the entire galaxy for the finest quality in human apparel. And now we've found it. You can find it too on the World Wide Web. Go to tpublic.com and search Cretans Guild. There you will find numerous designs and vibrant colors of your choosing. You can get a Cretans Guild design logo on a t-shirt for the humid times, or you could get a hoodie and keep your extremities warm. You can also get phone cases, laptop cases, notebooks, mugs, pillows, and totes. I repeat, 
tpublic.com. Search Cretans Guild. Now, Autobots, transform and roll out.